Jim Records was talking about his opinion on the current crisis and how we are headed to a new great depression. For all of you who don't know who is Jim Records, he is an American lawyer, economist, investment banker, speaker, media commenter and author on matters of finance and precious metals. Talking about the definition of the great depression, Jim said that it's kind of points to the distinction between a depression and a recession. These are two different things. Recession, people are familiar with it. Economists use the term all the time. And it has that numeric definition. It's two or more consecutive quarters of declining GDP. There are a couple of other factors that go in, but that's the basic rule of thumb. So two consecutive quarters, two or more of declining GDP. That's basically what recession is. Of course, we had a recession at least in the United States, actually probably most of the world, and the first half of 2020. The first quarter and second quarter were both down and there's the recession. So the third quarter growth was quite strong. It didn't come all the way back compared to what was lost in the first half, but it was quite strong. So that you could argue that the first recession was over by July of 2020. We have a group in the United States called the National Bureau of Economic Research. It's a private group of economists, but they are the official scorekeepers if you will ask about the recessions. They did declare recessions started in the first quarter. They haven't said it's over, but it's very likely that they reach that conclusion. Now let's talk about depression. Depression is different as per Jim. Economists, first of all, don't like the word depression because it's more subjective. It's not as quantitative. It involves a lot of, almost a psychological behavior variables, if you will. But depressions are real. They happen. And we are in one now, according to Jim. But economists just don't like to talk about it. They have kind of banned the D word. So a lot of people assume that if a recession is two quarters or more of declining GDP, the depression sounds worse. It must be 10 quarters of declining GDP, some really horrible economic outcome. And that's not the definition. We can actually have growth in a depression, but the point is it's depressed growth. It's growth below trend, below potential. And for that matter, we could make a good case that we have been in a depression since 2008. Look at the recovery. We had a recovery from 2009 to 19. It was the longest expansion in US history, but it was also the weakest expansion in US history. The average annual growth during the entire 10 year period was about 2.2%. Whereas in all recoveries post 1980, the average recovery was at 3.2%. So there's an example where you had growth, but it was a full percentage point below trend, below what we had done previously. If you go back even further, to the end of World War II, forward average recoveries were closer to about 4.5%. So if that is the potential in a developed economy and you are growing at 2.2%, that's basically depressed growth. We can leave the definition of what happened for those 10 years for another day. But now the point is, we have had a technical recession. We may be approaching another technical recession of the first back-to-back -back recession since 1980. But that aside, we are in a period of depressed growth. We won't recover 2009 levels of output until late this year, at the earliest, maybe probably early 2022. This will persist for not just years, but for perhaps a decade or even more. This will be internalization and its impact. So that's what we mean by depression. This could be or was appeared to be worse than the Great Depression. Those figures from the Great Depression took 4 years to play out or in some ways 10 years if you go all the way up to 1940. We have only been in this for about a year. Now Jim says that we are in a new Great Depression. It will persist. We'll have intergeneralization effects and will be very difficult to get out of. Even periods of growth will be a very weak growth because a lot of people think about the high unemployment rate. 
For example, if they think about the Great Depression and if you look at the unemployment rate, in last April, it was sky high, around 15% and then it went all down the way to around somewhere 6.3%. Of course, you can have a whole discussion about the definition of unemployment in your mind. You also describe the labor force participation rate which has been declining over time. But just purely looking at the unemployment rate, it seems like we are in a much better state now purely based on that number. The employment rate has been dropping steadily since the late 1990s but more steeply since 2008 fell off a cliff in 2020. But it's dropped over 10 years or so from the high 60s to the low 60s. Now that doesn't sound like a lot. We are talking about almost 10% of a workforce of 120 million people. So this is 12 million people or so who don't have jobs. But we are not talking just about early retirees or baby boomers or teenagers or others. These are basically able-bodied people between the ages of 25 and 54, prime working age. There are over 10 million of them who don't have jobs. But they are not counted as unemployed because they are not looking for jobs. But the point is, well, if you are a bartender in a town where every bar is closed, what's the point of looking for a job? Maybe you can move to Phoenix, Arizona and put solar panels together, but that's not very likely. The point is that the labor force participation rate never gets to 100. It never gets over 70%. There are good reasons for some people not to have jobs. You could be a student. It could be a homemaker. There are other reasons as well. But when it drops that much, you have a large pool. So it's even beginning to sink in at the Fed a little bit. If you take, be able by the Americans who don't have jobs but not looking for them and add them to the unemployed list, that number, percentage number goes up to about 12 or 15 percent. That is a depression level unemployment rate. So guys, tell me in the comment section below, what do you think? Are we heading towards a new Great Depression or you disagree with Jim Rickard's theory? Also, if you found this video helpful, then please make sure to press the like button, subscribe to our channel. I'll see you in my next video. Till then, have a great day.